The story begins with a car driving in the snow. A girl is standing in the middle of the road for some reason. It shifts to a lady lying in bed in her house. After her lamp flickers, she gets up to look through the window. She thinks she sees someone and moves the curtain to the side, but no one is there. When she is getting ready to leave, we see an interesting sign near the front door. It says there has been no sun for the past 97 days. Beth, our protagonist, changes the number to 98. Then she goes outside to enter her car. In there, she holds a cassette titled, Dad's Music. Beth puts it to use by listening to it while beginning to drive. Once she arrives at her location, she states the address of the place into a radio and says everything is clear. She also starts filling out paperwork. Seeing a flickering light post, Beth tells herself she finally has something to report. Suddenly, a person surprises her by slamming her window repeatedly. It prompts Beth to talk into her radio again. The woman on the other line asks if it's a stray, and Beth says it is. Soon the person stops slamming the window to simply stare at her. We can guess that it must be some sort of a zombie. Afterward, he gets on top of the car, from which he gets thrown off by a man holding a special tool. At this moment, Beth exits her car, and the man tells her they are supposed to report the zombies. She asks him why it is acting like that. It's the way they have been lately, he replies. We learn this area is Beth's quadrant. The man is Tom, who seems to have taken an instant liking to her, but she ignores his interest. She takes out a photo of an elderly man, asking if Tom has seen him. He does not recognize the man. After he sedates the zombie, Beth tells him to call a certain number if the man in the photo shows up. She lets Tom know that the man is her father. Back at her home, she looks at a framed photo of her dad. Then she looks outside of her window with interest. The next scene has Beth with her friend, Natalie, at work. She tells her friend she felt like she wasn't home alone this time. It felt like someone was outside, looking into her house. We learn she is rather isolated at her workplace, with no one else around her quadrant for about 15 blocks. As their conversation unfolds, Natalie tells her she can't keep blaming herself for what happened. Yet Beth replies she blames herself for not seeing it coming. She also says now an unspecified, she, is in her dreams, which replay every night. Following this, Beth occupies a bar. Carol, the bartender, tells her a certain drink mixes badly with her medication. It gives her nosebleeds. Beth says she's not taking any medication and Carol is surprised how. Beth does not want Carol to tell anyone that she doesn't need to take them. She sits at a table, looking at a bottle of pills. While she sleeps, she sees the same girl again in her dream. She is now crawling on the ground. Waking up, Beth looks at the photo of her dad. Moving along, she is at a club, where she meets a young lady named Tabitha. Soon they start dancing together and quickly engage in intimacy. Back at Beth's house, we see them sleeping in bed. Oddly, another Beth is standing near the bed, observing Tabitha and her sleeping self. She approaches Tabitha and starts kissing her. Afterward, this second Beth sees a wound on her leg in the mirror. Once the sleeping Beth wakes up to see the other her, the standing Beth screams and the lying one follows suit. This causes Beth to wake up. She checks her leg and realizes there is no wound there. Later, Tabitha is awake, hearing Beth tell her she had fun last night. But her guest's mind is elsewhere. Tabitha is concerned about the constant darkness. She knocks over a cup because she's feeling sick. Her behavior prompts Beth to say Tabitha should probably leave. As she is leaving, Beth asks if she could give Tabitha a lift. However, the lady just leaves without saying anything. Later Beth walks inside a building with Natalie. Tom is taking them somewhere. He asks Beth if she has ever met the innkeeper. It has been some time, she replies. Tom informs her that the innkeeper dedicated his whole life to this place. Soon they enter a room where an older man sits behind a desk. He is the innkeeper. Tom tells him Beth is there for the new intake. The first thing the innkeeper tells her is that it's been a while since they have seen her. In return, Beth responds, it has been a long time since she got a call, and asks to see her dad. The innkeeper asks her if she's still taking her medication. She tells him she is. She even states the name of it, Solger Glycine. Shortly after, the man is taking them through an area where we see people being held like prisoners. He says there was a time when they tried to keep them all in jails. He takes the duo to a man he says Tom wanted them to see. Entering the cell, the innkeeper takes the man to the window for Beth to meet. But she shakes her head, meaning he isn't her father. The man, who is astray, their word for zombie, slams into the window and growls. So Tom enters the room to deal with him. As they are walking away, Natalie tells the innkeeper that maybe the stray wanted to be treated like a human. The innkeeper is slightly on the rude side, saying maybe he wants her to mind her own business. He adds that he hasn't seen them this aggressive. In the next scene, 
Beth occupies a pool with several others. A man emerges from the water, asking her if she needs a lifeguard. He also asks if she's a volunteer, and she nods. She works at Sector 15, a place the man claims to have grown up in. He says the city is very empty, disallowing him to meet anyone new. Yet Beth still meets strangers. Later she is driving her car and suddenly stop when she spots someone standing oddly in the distance. She calls dispatch to report the person as a stray. There is a small problem though. Beth learns all the transports are on other calls now. The dispatcher tells her to be calm, for strays are not hostile. But Beth whispers to herself they are. She sees the stray start to walk, making her follow it. Soon she calls out to the stray, and he turns around to walk in her direction. Becoming scared, she starts to walk back until she falls, which allows him to get on top of her. Thankfully, a man is there to help her by taking him off her. Beth thinks it's her father, who for some reason runs away. At this moment, more help arrives to deal with the stray man. One of them asks Beth for her tag number. He's surprised to discover she does not know it. Thus he tells her how she can determine the number, and she quickly gives it to him, before chasing her dad. Alas, he is nowhere to be found. Why he chose to run from his daughter is a mystery. Elsewhere, Natalie tells Beth at least the latter knows her father is still alive. Beth says she always knew that. She also claims that she is feeling great. Then they get a knock on the door, and Natalie says it's a late arrival. Opening the door, Beth sees it's the man she met in the pool. He is Derek, asking if she has time for a drink. Beth lets him inside, wondering how he found her. He says only a few bars are open at this hour, plus she smelt of alcohol when they met. Afterward, they sit at a table together and Derek tells her he's curious about what she is on. She doesn't take medication, Beth says. She thinks the strays are getting worse, making her wonder if it's due to the medication. She shrugs upon getting asked if she worries about being caught. Derek tells her he's taking a fairly high dose, and she calls him sensitive. Subsequently, the duo leaves together to enter Derek's house. Near his bed, they just smile as they start to undress, seemingly taking turns to remove an article of clothing. Soon enough, they start to engage in romance. As they sleep, the other Beth watches them. We could call her the Dream Beth. She crawls over to Derek and starts kissing him like she did with Tabitha. We see an ugly injury on her back. Once the lying Beth opens her eyes, the dream Beth looks at her. It prompts the woman to wake up from this strange dream. Again, she checks herself for injuries and finds none. Derek is already awake, smoking while sitting on the bed. He says she kept him up too late. He's exhausted and has to go to work, so he thanks her sarcastically. We see him putting pills into his hand from a small bottle. Before leaving his house, Beth notices a withered plant in the room. As she is walking outside, a man pulls up in his plow truck to ask if she wants a ride. Despite her telling him her car is nearby, he still wants to drive her, but it doesn't change her mind. Returning home, she changes the days of there being no sun from 99 to 100. Then she stands in the kitchen with a sink full of dishes and looks out the window, uttering profanity. In her dream, she sees the girl again, crawling in the snow. When she's driving, she spots someone walking in the distance. Beth exits the car to yell out to the person, thinking it's her father. Alas, he does not answer her. Therefore, she takes a photo of the house she's next to, before continuing to drive. At her workplace, Beth tells Natalie to join her on her patrol tonight. Although she says it will be fun, Natalie doesn't want to do it. She is worried about encountering a stray, but her friend tells her she won't. Afterward, we see them driving together. Natalie is curious to know why all the houses they see are being maintained. Beth guesses it's to keep the illusion that everything is coming back to the way it was. She says if one wanted to, one could snoop into a different house every night. She asks Natalie if she wants to do that. Prior to receiving her answer, she stops at the house she took a photo of. Beth wants to go inside, yet Natalie doesn't want to break in. Beth tells her the reason she's doing very well is because she let go of all the rules that used to exist. She also notes that the universe isn't exactly following its own rules. Half of the time, she isn't sure what is real and what's a dream. She convinces her friend to enter the house. After they break in, the duo goes to explore separate ways. Beth takes the upper floor to search for her dad. In the attic, she finds a simple bed. At that moment, Natalie calls her down with a degree of urgency. Looking out the window, Beth sees three strays standing near her car. Natalie tells her to call a transport, but Beth has left her phone in the car. Staying in the house isn't safe either, for Beth thinks they may have busted the lock upon breaking in. At this point, she reveals to her friend that the reason she wanted to come to the house is for her dad. She has a plan to distract the strays, which will allow Natalie to drive north and meet Beth on the south side. 
Thus, she exits the house to initiate in her plan. The strays chase her, while Natalie runs to the car. After she drives for a short time, Beth jumps into the passenger seat to escape the strays. At a resting zone, Natalie expresses her disappointment with Beth lying to her. Her friend sugarcoats what she has done by saying she merely withheld information. She also says their adventure got their blood pumping. They needed what they just went through. Yet Natalie counters that just because Beth is immune to the strays, it does not mean she can drag Natalie into such situations. Beth says whatever she has, she thinks her dad understands it somehow. The next scene shows her sneaking into a building discreetly. She opens the door to a flat and sees Derek smoking on the bed. She tells him she returned to check on him, but she sees something is not quite right with the man. So she slowly backs away into the hallway. As she walks away, Beth calls dispatch to request a transport. She is asked to give a specific number that she does not have. The dispatcher tells her she can't send a transport if she doesn't know where Beth is. However, she still manages to have Derek placed in a cell at the innkeeper's building. Tom places him there, meaning she may have called him personally. Then she exits the building and enters her car. A problem presents itself in the form of the tires being stuck in the snow. Beth attempts to combat it by using a shovel until the man in the plow truck shows up. He is Jason offering his help by having her push the car whilst he drives it. This way, they fix the problem, and she kisses him for it. Their intimacy outside continues in Beth's shower. Afterward, they sleep together. The dream Beth starts kissing Jason while moving around oddly. He wakes up and starts choking her. This causes the sleeping Beth to feel the suffocation. When Jason gets her on the floor, Beth's father appears to take him off, dealing with him in a way similar to what Beth just did. He tells his daughter she has to stop, but she says she can't. They are coming for her, he adds. They will want to take back what she took from them. With those words, Beth wakes up from the nightmare. She calls dispatch again to say she has another pickup. He is in bed with her. Unlucky for her, all transports are currently engaged. Thus, she resorts to taking Jason out of the house, and it looks like he's turning into a stray. He too is soon occupying a cell. The innkeeper tells Beth the strays are getting weirder every day. Looking at them, she realizes it's her fault. Tabitha is there, along with Derek banging on the glass due to seeing Beth. Tabitha uses a chair to break the glass, which she follows by jumping out of the opening to chase Beth. She catches the woman quickly and attacks her on the floor. Thankfully, Tom kicks her off before trying to sedate her. Since Tabitha knocks the syringe from his hand, Beth takes it to sedate the stray. All of this trouble makes the innkeeper order Beth to stay away from this place. Later, she's in the pool with Natalie, whom she apologizes to regarding their patrol. Natalie says Beth is lucky the former is desperate for friends. Changing the subject, Beth tells her something is happening that she doesn't understand. She keeps having certain dreams, and they are very vivid. It feels like they're being connected to something real. Beth asks her friend if she thinks it's possible for the things they do in dreams to change their conscious lives. What Natalie thinks is that Beth needs to take her medication like everyone else. She thinks Beth is putting all of them at risk, the lady with the immunity says she can't tell what is real anymore. Following this, the friends lie down in another room, where they fall asleep. The dream Beth appears and starts doing the strange movement on Natalie, but Tom is there to stop her by injecting the dream Beth with his syringe. After Beth wakes up, Tom walks into the room for real this time. He says he's suspended from his job because of the ruckus Beth created. This news surprises her, forcing the lady to say she is sorry. She also says that with most of the recent strays, she was with them before they transformed. Tom replies it's fine. It is known that the condition isn't transmitted through intimacy. Then he asks how the wiring is in her place. She claims not to have experienced an issue, for her dad is an electrician. Once Tom says the strays interfere with electrical systems, Beth becomes curious. The scene shifts to the trio at Beth's house. She asks Tom why the strays cause the electrical disturbances. Unfortunately, the man doesn't have an answer so Beth seems to have invited him to her house for no reason. After they speak for a short time longer, Tom is getting ready to leave. He asks if the ladies are going to be okay tonight, but Beth just says goodnight to him. As the night progresses, we see Natalie inside the shower, falling asleep. Beth drifts off to sleep on the couch, and the light flickers. The dream Beth walks into the washroom to engage in the strange kiss with Natalie. This prompts the main Beth to wake up and rush to the washroom to witness it. She attempts to take the dream Beth off her friend, yet her dream version pushes Beth to the floor. There, she sees her zombie face in the mirror. Exiting the dream, Beth worries for Natalie. She goes inside the washroom to see it is absent of her. Thus, she drives to the bar to search for her. Frantic, 
She asks the man who's playing the guitar if he has seen Natalie. Since he's not answering her, Beth backs away out of discomfort. Carol is there too, looking oddly at her. To finish the stressful moment, the man drops his guitar and stands up to look at Beth. This makes her rush out of the bar. Now she walks inside the innkeeper's building, witnessing the disorder taking place in the cells. The innkeeper says he told her not to return. Ignoring his words, Beth tells him she is looking for her friend. The man informs her the strays became like this a few minutes ago. It's like they know when she is on her way there. Grabbing her head, he demands to know what she has done. But her level of knowledge is as low as his. He also wants to know why everyone is transforming except her. He says half of the captured strays have some connection to her. Only she can figure this out, according to him. The scene ends with him saying if she takes from them, they must be able to take back. Afterward, the innkeeper drives with Beth in her car because he has agreed to search for Natalie with her. Once they arrive to their location, Beth tells the man to stay in the car while she goes inside the building. She looks for Natalie in the pool area. Although she doesn't find her friend, she collects her bottle of pills from the locker. In the meantime, the innkeeper plays her dad's music cassette. We see someone slowly emerging in the backseat. Then Tom appears near Beth, telling her Natalie isn't there. He accuses Beth of being responsible for possibly turning the lady into a stray. Realizing that Beth is the one causing the trouble, he assaults her. Switching back to the car, the innkeeper notices someone sitting in the backseat in the rearview mirror. It makes him get out of the car in fright and conceal himself in the snow. Beth uses a shard of broken glass and stabs Tom in the arm to free herself. The person whom the innkeeper got scared of was none other than Natalie. She takes the wheel and drives over the elder man. She even goes in reverse, plastering him on the road a second time. Following this, Beth is outside, where she sees the innkeeper lying in the snow, very likely deceased. Natalie now walks inside the building of the kept strays. She uses a keycard to unlock all the doors, allowing the strays to leave their cells. Shifting to Beth, she notices a flickering light post. She looks to her left and sees the crowd of freed strays heading her way. So she runs elsewhere, seeing a lady crawling in the snow like in her dreams. Running past her, Beth enters another building. There she finds a man sitting on a chair, whom she quickly recognizes as her father. Seeing her prompts him to stand up in surprise. For a moment, they don't say anything to each other, letting their reunion sink in. Her dad breaks the silence by asking if they followed her to the building. Beth simply shakes her head. She says, this is where her mom was heading and asks why. He thinks she knew it was coming, in addition to wanting to show them where to go. Beth is curious to know why her dad is avoiding her. He does not want to put her at risk, he says. The man claims to have the same ability she has, but his answer does not satisfy her, for she is already at risk and needs his help. He thinks the only way to stay safe is to stay away from each other. Connection is the problem. When one connects with another, one takes something until nothing is left. Her father stresses there is no other solution. As Beth is leaving, he tells her to stay because he might not be able to help her next time. However, his daughter says her farewell to him. Beth enters a different building and takes several pills from the bottle she collected. She follows this by falling asleep on the couch. All the freed strays find her there, lying helplessly. Natalie is among them, initiating the strange movement onto Beth that the latter did to all of her partners. The dream Beth appears, looking like a zombie. She watches as the strays take turns with her, taking back what she stole from them. Natalie has regained her life and so has Derek. Soon Natalie yells for her friend to wake up. Once she does, she looks like a zombie. The last thing we see Beth do is walk toward the glass to look at her healthy dream self behind it. She stares at her with a destroyed expression, while her friends show their love to the zombie Beth.